Are you dealing with nagging hip pain that just won't go away? Well, I have a great solution. Today we're gonna to be giving you one solution, but this is also part of a seven part series of videos that we're gonna be doing on how to get rid of hip pain and what you need to be doing. We're gonna be giving you just a couple of exercises to do each day, some muscle activations, and as you keep progressing, you can take which ones you like and use them, or you can rotate them once we've gone through all of them and apply them into your life. Hey friends, my name is Yogi Aaron and I'm the creator of Applied Yoga Anatomy and Muscle Activation. Now, please remember, if you like these videos, please click like below and comment on them. And also, please let me know how these practices are going for you and if there's any other kind of videos that you would like to see me create for you to get rid of your pain and help you to live your best pain-free life. So you guys are having some pain. A lot of people, when they say that they have pain in their hips, they usually will point somewhere into the side of the hips, just above the, the hip bone, which is called the greater truncantor, or they'll point you know, more into the glutes. Now, there's a lot of muscles in this area. And one of the worst things that we can do is actually stretch those muscles because stretching the muscles is going to make those muscles weaker. Stretching causes problems and inhibits the muscle, the neuromuscular connection between the brain and the muscles so that the muscles lose their ability to contract and contract on demand. Muscle activation is a great solution because it improves the muscle function, which is what we're looking to do. We want to improve the muscle function so that the muscle has that ability to contract and contract on demand and be able to support the joints of the body. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> what are you doing here? One of the muscles. <laughs> <laughs> I just had a friend just come over and join me while I'm filming. This is Queen Charlotte, and she's just absolutely adorable. One of the muscles that we want to make sure that are working is a muscle called the psoas. It's one of the biggest uh, hip flexors that we have, and it's responsible for maintaining the curvature of the lumbar spine as well as stabilizing the hips through different ranges of motion. Now you might be wondering, why are we doing a muscle that's focused on the spine? Well, here's the thing. A lot of hip problems actually come back to what's going on in the spine. Now, is that always true? No, it's not always true. Is it more often true than not? Yes. I know a lot of different people who are movement specialists that focus on getting the muscles in the back working especially the psoas muscle because of its relationship to maintaining that curve in the lumbar spine as well as stabilizing the lumbar spine through different ranges of motion. If the lumbar spine is more stabilized, the hips in turn will have more stability. But also, the uh, psoas major is one of the muscles of the hips and it actually attaches to the inside of the hip bone. It, the lesser truncanter. So let's do a quick muscle hack or muscle activation to get our psoas working properly. Queen Charlotte, are you going to join me here? Yes, you are. Oh, you're such a happy camper. So come on to your backs for this one. What we're gonna do is just do a little bit of a test first. So externally rotate uh, your left leg and bring your left leg about 20 degrees to the left. Bring your right hand to the right hip bone and just lift that left leg up. <laughs> it's puppy madness now. And then come back down. You might have noticed that your right leg or your right hip uh, kind of came up a bit. And so we want to make sure that that hip is not coming up. So what you're going to do here is bend both of your knees and we're going to activate the psoas on the left side. So bring that left ankle across your right knee. So some of you will, you know, notice this pose as one that a lot of runners use. They sometimes call the runner stretch or figure four. 
but we're not actually not going to obviously do any kind of stretching. So we're going to have that ankle on the knee. You're going to bring your right hand towards the left knee and then push that left knee into the hand. Now the hand is just there as a wall, so you're not going to push or reach uh, that knee with the hand, okay? So push the knee into the hand. And then we're gonna push it there for two, three, four, and six, and then relax. And then, and then do it again. <laughs> two, three, four, five, and six. <laughs> and then relax. And then do it again. Push the knee into the hand for two, three, four, five, and six. And relax. And then do it again for two, three, four, five, and six and relax and do it again and then relax and we'll do it one more time push the knee into the hand for two three four five and six good now straighten out the legs bring your right hand to your right pelvic bone externally rotate the left leg bring the left leg out about 20 degrees and then just lift the left leg up. Do you guys feel a difference? It should feel easier. Maybe in some of you it's not as easy. I mean, it's, it's a little bit easier. Some of you are like, oh my God, that's a huge difference. Whatever it is, the muscle of the left psoas is now working. Let's actually do the other side. So externally rotate the right leg and then bring that right leg out to the right about 20 degrees. And then bring your left hand to that left pelvic bone <laughs> and then lift that leg up. And you can just kind of feel like how heavy it is. Does that left pelvic bone pop up? All right, so let's do the muscle activation on the right side for the psoas. So we're gonna cross that right ankle over the left knee. You're going to bring your left hand towards the right knee and then bring the right knee into the left hand. So again, you're pushing knee to hand, and this will start to engage the psoas, aka shorten it, and then relax. And then do it again. So push the knee into the hand. And again, we're holding these for six seconds, and we're gonna do it six times, and then relax. And then do it again, and holding two, three, four, five, and six, and then relax. And then do it again for two, three, four, five, and six, and relax. And then do it again, two, three, four, five, and six, and relax. And do it again, two, three, four, five, and six, relax, and do it again. Two, three, four, five, and six, and relax, and we'll do it one more time. For two, three, four, five, and six, good. Now straighten the legs out, and externally rotate that right leg. Bring the left hand to your left hip bone. Bring the right leg about 20 degrees to the right, and then just slowly lift it up. And again, notice the difference, the before and after. Notice what it's like to have a muscle that's working and strong as opposed to a muscle that's weak and not working, okay? So this is just day one. Come back tomorrow in the next video and we're gonna start adding on to these practices and giving you all of the muscle activations that you need to know so that you can have strong, stable hips that are also pain-free. So to activate the psoas, we're gonna bend the knees, bring the feet again, just like we did for bridge pose. And then we're going to bring our right ankle across the left knee, bring our left hand towards the right knee, and then bring the right knee to the left hand. 
Now you're going to push the knee into the heel of the hand. If you kind of want to line up where the heel of your hand should be, look at where your kneecap is and right where the inside of your left kneecap is. If you want to get more specific, it's on the medial condyles of the femur bone and then the uh, tibia tibula and then you're going to press that into the heel of your hand so one of the most important things here is think about knee to hand okay don't press at all with your hand relax and then do it again very nice so this is bringing the psoas into a more shortened state and then relaxed and then do it again as you bring the psoas into that shortened state and starts to contract, starts to stimulate what we call gamma motor neurons and then relax and then do it again. Those gamma motor neurons are signaling to the central nervous system, hey, we're here and we need to shorten. So it's improving that messaging system and relax and do it again. It's improving that messaging system between the brain and the muscles between the central nervous system and the muscles so that the muscle improves its ability to contract and contract on demand. Relax and do it again. Two, three, four, five, six, and relax and do it again. Two, three, four, five, six, and relax. And one more time. Two, three, four, five, and six, and relax. And let's do the other side. So bring that right knee down, lift the left knee up, bring the left ankle, cross that right knee, and then bring your right hand towards your left knee, and then bring that left knee into the right hand, okay? And if you bring your fingers down to your abs on the left side, you can start to feel those muscles popping out. And especially if you want to go in a little bit deeper, you can actually start to feel the psoas, you know, contracting, engaging, and relax. And do it again. Two, three, four, five, six, and relax. And do it again. And relax. And do it again. Two, three, four, five, and six, and relax. And do it again. And relax, and do it again. Very nice, very good, and relax. Okay, so now that we've finished those please let me know in the comments below. What, how is this practice for you? Are you feeling different in your hips? What's going on? I would love to know so that I can support you guys in living your best pain-free life. Remember to do the next video now as we get into other muscles that are supporting the hips. And because those muscles aren't working properly, it's probably contributing to hip pain. So let's dive more into the series in the next video. Fact or fiction? These are some of the questions that you probably have as you're looking at so much of the information that's out there. Well, I've started a series called the Stretching Police Series, where we go in and we look at what some of the people are doing out there, some of the claims that people are making about solutions to pain. Is it fact or is it fiction? What can you take and what should you throw away? So join me in the stretching police and remember to like and comment in this video below so that I know how these videos are affecting you in living your best pain-free life.